Hello, 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 and, uh, and uh, I believe the talk is beginning very soon. And uh, uh, my name is Shilang He, and uh, as Twitter handle Blanker QD, and uh, here's my colleague uh, Marco Garcia. And uh, we are now delivering a talk on the sandboxes and uh, how do you escape from the Chrome sandbox and the Safari sandbox, and uh, how to have a good overview of the sandboxes. And, uh, so uh, let's get started. Let's get started. And uh, here is the introduction. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, Marco. Hi, everyone. And. Uh, I'm currently a senior security researcher at uh, Keen Lab of Tencent, and uh, my main focus is uh, vulnerability research, especially on uh, OS X, uh, iOS, and uh, Android. Uh, I'm also uh, the same title. I'm not repeat again. And uh, uh, I, my main focus is on the like uh, bug hunting and exploiting on Unix and uh, also Linux and uh, and other uh, Linux like uh, platform like uh, Apple stuff. And uh, to be honest, I know nothing about Windows. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, for our team, and uh, we are previously known as the King Team. And uh, uh, King Team is a um, point one a frequent winner, and uh, I believe like uh, eight champions in five or four years. And uh, uh, due to some business issues, we moved into Tencent, and uh, we are now a deep research lab of the Tencent uh, who developed like QQ, WeChat, or whatever, it's sort of things. And uh, in this year, in March of this year, we got a master phone title uh, with, the t with the Tencent PC Manager. And uh, I believe this is the first and uh, we uh, let the Koreans go home and just feed them. Okay. Okay, uh, so here is the agenda, and uh, uh, as I have stated before, and we will do introduction sandboxes and both the Safari sandbox on the Apple platform and the Google Chrome sandbox on the Android platform, and uh, we we'll do the comparison and uh, auditing the sandboxes and uh, how, how to do auditing, where you should look at, and uh, we'll give some case studies on some historical vulnerabilities and uh, some vulnerabilities we used in this year's point home. And uh, also, uh, at the end of the talk, we will deliver like uh, two demos of escaping the Safari sandboxes. And uh, uh, actually, we uh, I believe we should present uh, like a Chrome demo, but uh, we we hope to reserve it for this year's Ponto <coughs> Mobile Ponto. I uh, forgive me. And uh, and finally, we will get to the summary and the conclusions. Okay, first. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we will start with a, a quick introduction to what sandbox are. So, uh, what is a sandbox? Uh, a sandbox uh, is a very important uh, concept in a modern, modern operating system for security. So basically a sandbox is a, a mechanism, a, a, a way to run some code that uh, you don't trust too much uh, in a constrained environment. Uh, so in this way, if something goes wrong inside of this code uh, and uh, you're an attacker get, uh, for example, code execution inside of this code, uh, the system is not totally compromised and the adversary is still restricted inside of the sandbox. So uh, a sandbox specify which resource this particular program uh, piece of code have access to. Um, so uh, I think it became a crucial component for security in the last uh, few years uh, after people started noticing that it's impossible to uh, get rid of all all the bugs, especially in very complex code like WebKit uh, and the web page renderers and Chrome and the document parser. So it become, became very clear that uh, uh, a defense in depth approach must be taken. Uh, uh, people said the browsers are a collection of use after free vulnerabilities that manage to work on HTML. <laughs> and uh, so, um, uh, now, uh, in modern uh, software, there are two strategies. The first one, obviously, is to fix bugs, but also the second one is to constrain this untrusted uh, code inside of sandbox. So um, let's take a look at a couple of uh, sandbox uh, implementations, and uh, uh, Flanker will give you an introd um, introduction to the implementation of sandbox on Android. Uh, I believe in the historical years, uh, people tend to adopt the DAC control, 
that's uh, at the beginning of Android. I believe it dates back to 2010 or 2009 when Android was the original boy in, in a small company. And uh, it first adopted a DSA, DSA control and uh, it's just uh, enforced in a Linux kernel. And the initial uh, version of Android, uh, each application runs an, in a unique UID. And uh, the kernel will enforce it like uh, FireXX across different UIDs. Uh, for example, uh, application with UID A, it uh, normally cannot access uh, uh, fires in, with UID B and uh, uh, unless the, the application B specifies a word readable uh, for, this for his files. And uh, it's, I, I believe it's easy to understand and any Linux beginners uh, have a good, good understanding of the, U, of the DSA control that uh, you cannot access another user's files. And uh, in Android, each application is a user. And uh, uh, of course, there is an exception that is called the shared UID format. And I believe uh, this is uh, some special cases we need to consider, but in general, each application has a different UID, and this enforces file access and resource access. And also, uh, Android also implements some access controls on network, and uh, you have to be granted a specific uh, group ID and to access a network, to access a camera, to access some device drivers or whatever. Uh, so, uh, in a conclusion, the DSA format, control format is uh, very easy to understand, uh, but it has been proven to be unflexible to, uh, to deal with the modern attacks, uh, like uh, cl attackers are becoming clever, clever and are finding more and more bugs. So people are introducing the MAC control. The MAC control is uh, originally developed by NSA, and I believe uh, Snowden knows that. And uh, the, the, it's originally uh, founded in the, in the NSA labs, and uh, some people adopted to the IC Android, and after uh, like Android 4.3, it is introduced in the mainstream of Android. And this gives you some, the SNX give you a chance that you can define your own resources, uh, or define your own policy resources, and you can enforce on um, whether uh, when a resource is accessed, the, the policy can check and uh, it can uh, tell the, the, the driver, the kernel, that uh, uh, you should access it, the, somebody should access it, or somebody should not. And only after this MAC approach is taken, and then a DSA format is taken. If the MAC rejects you, you have no chance to face the DSA. And uh, also, it, I, I believe it uh, pro provides some uh, more modern way and more elegant way that, so that you can define your own IC Linux policies so that you can give a more fine granted control of what you can do and what somebody can do and what somebody cannot. But it is becoming more and more complex as Google continues to, dip, to increase the code basis for this MAC style, and uh, it comes somehow difficult to understand. So that's why uh, we are also del delivering this talk. And uh, I believe on OSX, the sandboxes also uh, takes the, the MAC approach from the very beginning of the iOS and uh, some earlier, like 10.7 version of OSX. Uh, so I turn the mic off. So now that Flanker gave an overview of Android Sandbox, we will check out the OSX Sandbox for the browser, uh, just to give you another example so we can compare the two approach. So this is the structure of the Safari Sandbox. Uh, basically, the Safari browser is uh, split into multiple processes. And uh, mm, this is because to, to separate uh, responsibility and components and uh, to uh, segregate untrusted code in a less privileged process. So for our purposes, we can just uh, think that there are two main processes. In reality, there are more, but to simplify, it's okay. Uh, one is the UI process, which is the one which the user interact on, where uh, you click the button and uh, go back and uh, input the URL. And the second one is in the background, and it's the web process. and uh, it's the process responsible for rendering your uh, web page and uh, uh, handling uh, untrusted uh, uh, inputs such as JavaScript and the HTML and the images. So, um, as you can understand, uh, the, the, the web process is the one that is handling the, the, more, the biggest part of, of untrusted content. And the, the UI process is just in charge to manage uh, the, the other process of, of the browser. So, 
uh, like I said, uh, the web content process is uh, in response, uh, his responsibility is to handle uh, uh, um, untrusted input and, uh, and to render this untrusted input into a, a web page, essentially. So usually a browser compromission, like when you get initial code execution inside of the browser, you get inside this web content process because maybe you have a JavaScript bug or maybe some rendering bug or something like that, you usually uh, get, get it here. Uh, but uh, this process have a very strict sandbox. So what you need to do after to compromise the system is to escape the sandbox. And uh, one uh, attack surface for this sandbox is the broker interface, uh, which is used uh, from the web process to communicate with the UI process. Because, for example, maybe the web process must open a file but he cannot do it himself. Uh, he must ask the broker uh, to do it through the UI process because the web process is too much sandboxed to do, to do it. So <clears throat> uh, the web content uh, sandbox is implemented like any other OSX sandbox uh, profile and uh, um, it leverages a kernel driver which is a sandbox.kxt uh, and uh, there are some files, like on Android you have a SE Linux profile, also in, a, in, a Unbo uh, in a OS X you have a, a sandbox definition file, and uh, for example, for the browser uh, renderer, you can find it at uh, this, this path. And uh, how it works, basically this file defines uh, what are your capabilities, and uh, whenever your, your, uh, um, your code executes a system call or, or something like that, the kernel will uh, check, will, uh, will have some callback inside of this system call, uh, some hooks, and uh, then it will uh, ask the sandbox uh, uh, driver to evaluate your sandbox profile, and uh, it will say to you, yes, you are allowed, or not, you are not. So uh, let's take a look how how a sandbox profile looks like. Um, as you can see here, um, we have a first, uh, first uh, very simple snippet. It's uh, written in this custom language, uh, very simple to understand, very human readable. And uh, as you can see, um, here there is a deny default rule. So uh, if you are under this sandbox uh, profile, uh, everything for you is denied. Uh, except some uh, whitelist that will uh, come after in the file. Um, and uh, as you can see after, uh, another sandbox profile is imported, system.sb. So you need to follow into this include uh, also to audit the sandbox profile. Uh, recently on OS X there is also another uh, addition that uh, it's worth mentioning. It's a system integrity protection. Uh, so basically, um, on OSX, the, if you don't opt in for the sandbox, you are you are not sandboxed. But now, with the system integrity protection in a recent uh, version of OSX, uh, every process, even the one running as root, is running inside a, a global system sandbox. So um, it's a new security mitigation. So. Uh, even if you have a root uh, code execution in user space, there are still some, some operation that you cannot do. As you can see here, uh, I'm running a touch command as a uh, root with sudo, but I cannot write into the system partition. This is because there is the system integrity protection uh, uh, avoiding this. So how can you bypass this? Uh, well, the best option for an attacker is to find a kernel bug because the system integrity protection is enforced inside of the kernel. So if you have a kernel code execution, you can also bypass system integrity protection as uh, we will see later in our demo. So as you can see uh, with the sandboxes like RSIP after they are introduced, uh, even the root user mode is uh, restricted. And you cannot say that a sudo make me a sandwich. Uh, no, I won't make you a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now let's move to the Android or Google stuff. And uh, uh, there's a big difference between Android and iOS. Like uh, on iOS, uh, almost every application is sandboxed by default. But in, uh, in like uh, Google, the Android format, they usually need to opt in and uh, use the isolated process feature to 
to handle a sandbox in your own process and uh, Chrome uh, leverage this uh, isolated process feature to implement uh, his own sandbox and we can see that in this Android dot, uh, Android manifest dot XML, XML file and there's the Android isolated process uh, equals true and it means that this service this is org dot chromium dot content dot app dot sandbox process service and which runs the v8 uh, uh, javascript engine uh, it is uh, isolated and uh, it has some di some different feature features and uh, there is uh, actually very small uh, even no privileges for this process uh, we believe that the isolated process was introduced in Android uh, around uh, four point three, and uh, in the official documentation, we have a word say that uh, if it is set to true, the service will run a special process that is uh, isolated from the rest of the system and has no permission of its own. And uh, given uh, like a PS uh, in output, and we can see that the Chrome is splitted. The Chrome app is split, splitted into three processes, and uh, uh, there are two. Uh, like like a, a normal process, but there is a one called sandbox uh, process, and we can see that it has an uh, UID that is U zero I zero, and which means isolated process zero, and uh, it have an asynchronous contest that has isolated app label. So even uh, you got a bug in the V8 V8 JavaScript engine, and uh, you only get the code execution in this uh, isolated isolated process, and you need to find some way to escape the sandbox. Otherwise, you cannot read the uh, victims, phones, SMS, uh, you cannot read them because uh, uh, the render process has uh, no privilege. And uh, uh, you can use like a kernel exploit, like uh, the ping pong route uh, to, to break out the sandbox, and uh, also you can use the broker exploit, and uh, also some other attack services in Android, like the binder, and uh, we will introduce later. Uh, first, uh, you want, if you want to find a way to break out, break out sandboxes, uh, you need to check its isolated policy. And uh, as we know, it is named like isolated app uh, .te. And under the external SA policy in the Android open source project's uh, source root. And uh, actually, to be honest, I think it's not as readable as the Apple ones. And uh, yeah, you, you can see, uh, first, you have uh, like uh, the domain type that uh, the domain is set to isolate app for our isolated process, and uh, then uh, there are some allowed. Uh, by default, you are denied for all, uh, but uh, you have some allowed things, and uh, you also have like, like a father uh, policy to inherit from. And uh, for some for some uh, allowed policies, we can see that only two IPC services or two system services uh, you can access it from the. Uh, from the isolated process, uh, which is the activity, activity service and the display service, and uh, some, you can see some unprivileged socket I/O controls, uh, but you cannot use like uh, uh, because after ping pong root, Google introduced this new policy to deny to deny you from exporting these uh, raw socket bugs, and. Uh, yeah, and, uh, there are also some never allows. The never allows is actually not uh, an, a, a statement in action. It's actually like a compile, compiler directive, uh, which means that uh, if you accidentally enabled these things in your policy files, uh, the Asynix 2, compiler 2, will generate a generate error and they will refuse to compile it. So you can see that uh, uh, they have some uh, most restricted thing to to deny the previous errors they have uh, they have make and uh, we can we will see it later, and uh, uh, I know we know the graphic drivers have many bugs, but uh, they implicit they explicitly specify that you cannot access graphic driver from this uh, isolated process. But uh, I, I, you may think that uh, the, there are two services like activity service and display service uh, you may access, but can you access all the surface, all the interfaces of the two services? The answer is no. Because there is an additional check in this uh, uh, service, in these interfaces, they are like uh, enforced not isolated color, and uh, it will actually use the binders feature to get the color the who it, uh, who initially in initialized uh, this binder transaction, and uh, they will retrieve the user ID that makes this call and check if you are isolated, if you are isolated or you are labeled. I'm sorry, you cannot perform it. And also. Uh, they have a, uh, like a father policy, like ABB domain, but it's not actually quite interesting, and we may look at it in the following slides. 
So let's turn to the, you have a brief overview of the how sandbox is implemented and where you can should look into the policy files. And now let's see how to audit the sandbox profile to find the possible attack services. So <clears throat> how do we audit a, a sandbox profile? Well, the first thing to do obviously is to read the, the definition of the sandbox profile in order to find uh, the, the best attack surfaces. Uh, so, mm, Let's try to do this on the, the, process, uh, the web process uh, uh, of Safari browser. So, uh, as I showed you before, there is a deny default uh, clause, but uh, shortly after there is an import of system.sb, so we need to check that as well. And uh, inside the system.sb there is a nice surprise. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's defined something uh, called the system graphics. So we need to check that also. So system graphic is defined here, and uh, it allows you to open several IO, IOKit user client, uh, all related to graphics. So basically, on uh, OS X, uh, the browser, the, the render process of, of the browser have uh, un unrestrained uh, access to all um, kernel driver interfaces, which is very good because uh, uh, compared to Android, which you cannot access, instead here on, I on OS X, we can access directly the graphic drivers, which is a really good uh, attack surface and uh, hopefully we can find some bugs. So uh, let's pick this attack surface uh, of graphics in kernel. So, in our sandbox profile, uh, this line is very interesting, interesting uh, which is uh, allow, allow IOKit open of IO Accelerator. IO Accelerator is a, a, a the graphic driver interface into the kernel. And uh, uh, with this uh, property in our sandbox profile, we can open more than 10 IO user client and speak to the kernel, hoping to trigger some bug. Because people like a fancy graphics on their browsers, so Apple had to make decision to allow these graphics. Yeah, for for performance also. Uh, real. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see an example of vulnerability. Uh, this vulnerability uh, we we found it uh, last year, and uh, we wanted to use it at Pontu Home, but uh, unfortunately for us. Uh, we got a bug collision, and uh, this vulnerability was also found by Project Zero, which uh, reported it before we could use it at uh, Pont to Own. So uh, this bug was a race condition inside the external method of, the, of Apple Intel BW Graphics, which is a graphic driver of uh, almost all the most recent MacBooks. So it affects every recent uh, MacBook with uh, this particular CPU family, which is the newest one uh, available for Apple products. Uh, we found it by code auditing uh, of this uh, code reachable from the Safari sandbox. Um, it was patched in 10.11.4, uh, and uh, it was reliably exploitable, so it was a cool bug. But uh, like we said, it got uh, fix it before we could use it. And uh, it's also funny because uh, Apple uh, uh, fixed it uh, wrongly and uh, Flanker reported this mistake, so now the bug is properly fixed. Uh, you know, uh, previously, uh, just uh, I believe uh, before the day before yesterday, Apple got free bugs from everyone. And uh, so actually they lose track of this report, uh, although they have fixed it. And I write to email to them, and uh, maybe after one month or two months, as uh, they are sent say, say, "Oh, I'm sorry, we lose track of it." And uh, oh, but I hope that after they pay bounties to everyone, they will become, uh, they will have a more uh, like a better attitude on this sort of things. <clears throat> so, uh, how this bug works? Very, very quickly. Uh, there is this uh, two uh, user client which, has re which are related to OpenGL and the OpenCL, uh, which can be uh, used from the sandbox. And uh, the problem is that uh, who brought this driver didn't think about uh, race condition problems. So we have some race condition problem inside the unmap user memory. 
So as you can see here, mm, there are some operations performed on an EG hash table inside this external method. But uh, as you can see, the, the method um, on this EG hash table, they are called uh, three different methods in, in, uh, sequentially. But uh, the lock is acquired only after. So what happens if two threads are racing inside this function? Of course, uh, race condition is triggered. So how to trigger it? Well, it's actually very simple to, to just trigger this bug, not so simple to exploit it, like we will uh, see. Uh, in order to trigger it, you just have to open uh, this user client and uh, call uh, uh, one time uh, or more than one uh, map user memory to insert uh, one element inside the hash table. And then you have to try to race with the two threads the call inside unmap user memory. And then mm, you have to repeat this uh, map and unmap race in, until you trigger the bug. Uh, at first, the bug will manifest itself uh, like a double free. Uh, but as we will see after, we can turn it in something more useful. Okay, now everyone uh, get a record of your uh, like data structure classes in the universities or high schools if you are a genius. And uh, uh, let's look at this uh, linked list. And uh, actually, we know that if you call the map memory, the memory, uh, your input is maintained as a linked list. Uh, and in a hash, uh, and a linked list is also uh, linked on a hash table because you know that if you use a hash table, there are hash collision issues. And this data structure solves this problem by maintaining a list on the collected elements. So we actually have like IG elements uh, linked here and from previous that our elements had a previous pointer point to his, his, his like a brother and he also had a nest, a nest pointer point to his nest brother. And so the ideal situation that we originally imagined that if we raise the threads and they will pass the hash tables contains check and when one is retrieving a pointer from this edge element, the other will, will other freeze it, and we can uh, fill something in this freed element and to get the RP control, to get the instruction pointer control. But uh, in reality, we do some testing, and we find that uh, the two threads, uh, they do pass this. Uh, they do pass like a contains call, but uh, the thread one is uh, actually more faster, and uh, maybe uh, 10, meters, 10 meters per second faster than the second thread and uh, maybe there are some schedule policy issues with Apple and uh, uh, it, the thread one will remo remove this element before thread, uh, for thread two get access to this element. And the thread two will unfortunately hit uh, like a null pointer references and we know that after Apple finally introduced the SMAP and you, can, uh, you uh, actually cannot exploit these null pointer dereferences on, on their platforms. So actually uh, after some uh, I, I believe I rehearsed my data structure classes and uh, I found that uh, actually you can do a risk on the two adjacent elements because you know that if you remove an element from a linked list, uh, the next link to next element to this one which was removed, uh, it will link to the previous element to the one that removed. So we can see that in this list we have element one, two, three, four, and uh, two, if two is removed, uh, one will be linked to three and uh, when three is removed, two will be linked to four. And uh, if we raise these two removes, uh, removes at the same time, we may get uh, one linked to three, but three is also, is also removed. So we get uh, like a free element that is stably connected on this linked list. And after we call like the linked traversal, and we will hit this use after free bug, and we turn this uh, originally double free like style like bug into a like UF bug, and this is like, it is much more stable. And uh, I believe Ian Beer also found this bug, although he didn't uh, figure out how to exploit it, uh, at least on his blog post and the Project Zero issues. And uh, nevertheless, Apple fixed it very fixed it, uh, and uh, they add a lock in this remove function, but they do not add a lock in this add function. Uh, maybe they think there are no issues here, but actually we would like to say no to this because if you do not lock the add function and uh, also the unlock function, uh, you can still, uh, like we can still raise like the add function and, uh, and the remove function at the same time, we can actually get a heap pointer leak to get rid of like KSLR. For example, if we are inserting an element after this linked list, because you know that if you are inserting elements after this linked list, 
it is get appended to the tail of the current element. So we can see that uh, it is, uh, if, you, if you open the element, it will be uh, appended to the element three, like uh, you have the element three has a next pointer point to the element four, but if you are in another thread and you race to remove the element three, actually you can get like a, a heap address in the free element and you can use some sort of like a memory function technique to get to get out of this hit pointer address in the kernel contest. Yeah, so this is the, the, their partial fix and we disclosed it Apple and uh, Apple fixed again and we believe uh, uh, no, now there, there should be no problem. And uh, if you are uh, more interested in the more details and uh, you can check out the two slides and uh, if you are interested. Okay, uh, now is enough time for the Apple stuff and uh, now look into the Android stuff. Uh, the Andro uh, in, in the Android uh, platform that uh, the, the isolate application uh, context, it is uh, inherited from the application uh, uh, policy, application.t policy and the application.t policy inherits the domain policy. The domain policy, they have some uh, more like uh, complex uh, complex rules, and uh, for example, that uh, in, in the all domains, uh, you can you, you can allow process to fork to to get some signals to send signal receive signal, uh, but uh, actually you know that in iOS platform, uh, a container application is not allowed to fork. Although in Android, it's allowed to, it's allowed to fork. And uh, in like uh, the sound policy, like application .t policy, uh, we have some like. Uh, uh, yes, it's a mem, so that uh, you can map um, a portion of memory and make it executable, so that you can place a shell code there. To after you get this uh, instruction pointer control, but this is not. Uh, I believe this is going to be uh, disallowed in this render uh, process. If they have, they, if they figure out some ways to buy, to make a GIT uh, mitigations, just like the stuff, uh, what Apple does uh, the day before yesterday. So uh, we have now have an understanding of this uh, sandbox policies, and uh, we have some some options. First, is the binder interface. We know that binder is the core of the Android interprocess communication, and uh, uh, although the binder interfaces are strictly uh, restricted in the Chrome sandbox, we still have some some ways to to to, to figure out some bugs, and uh, to to get some code execution. For example. Uh, in, uh, we, we have a bug that uh, actually it's found, I, I believe, like uh, found by yes, uh, last year by, by somebody that uh, it is a shared in storage integer overflow in the vector implementation of the Android uh, libutils. And uh, people uh, think that it is like a remote, uh, it is, uh, can be triggered in the media file parsing, but actually it can be also triggered in the sandboxes because uh, you know that uh, Paco. The Paco, which is the basic transaction unit in the uh, binary interfaces at, at the Java level, uh, you can specify a class name as a string uh, in the Java code, and when the Java object is deserialized, uh, a class based on this string name is constructed, and you actually have an additional path to trigger the deserialization and the serialization code in the system server context. Uh, if, you, if you call the system, uh, if you call the activity manager services interface, that's uh, from the render that is in the, that is accessible from the render sandboxes, and uh, you like uh, you make this code, uh, you make this deserialization code uh, code in the system server context, and uh, uh, actually you can trigger like a c trigger the CVE 2015 and the 3874 uh, I'm sorry uh, in the system server context, and also. Uh, we believe that uh, sometimes they forgot to do a more uh, fine-graded lockdown on this binder uh, interfaces. For example, in this portion of code, uh, we found that uh, they, uh, they accidentally placed uh, some more uh, service, service handles, like uh, the package service handle and the window service handle and the alarm service handle in this uh, binder, binder application calls. So, although the render process cannot open these services, uh, the, this function kindly, kindly open these services already for them. That uh, the, the render sand, render the sandbox process already get these three handles when it's initialized. So it actually it opens like a three additional attack surfaces. Uh, fortunately, uh, I believe the Google engineers are very clever and they figure out very soon and they patch it already, unfortunately. So uh, after this binder stuff, we still have like, uh, some 
more like a Chrome IPC that you, you, you know that Marco has introduced in our previous slide that uh, uh, the render process have to ask the broker process, which is a more privileged process, to do something for it, and they communicate it where they uh, using the Chrome IPC. And the Chrome IPC is implemented in native code, and we uh, believe that, and we actually, th there are some bugs in it. And uh, also, in Android platform, unlike the Windows ones, the WebGL process is running the host process. It is not running a separate process in the Chrome browser, it is running the host process, that is the Chrome browser process itself. So if we have a bug uh, in the WebGL, just like uh, what Lucky Heart do in the, this year and last year, we can uh, get a code execution in the GL process and actually we get code execution as a normal application in Android and uh, you get a much more contest to, to, to play with. And finally, we also have some like a kernel stuff, just like uh, what we did to the Safari render sandboxes. Uh, for example, the CVE 2015-1805 is a bug that is ported by us to gain a stable root stable routing on Android, and we try to port it to the render sandboxes, and uh, there are good news and bad news for us to exploit it in the render sandbox. The good news is that uh, there is no pipe policy. You know that this bug is related to the pipe IO vector in the Linux kernel, and there is no pipe policy in this isolated application, because actually it's uh, like a, a, nobody believes that this bug is exploitable, so there is no policy for this bug in the isolated application process, and uh, you cannot uh, ban this, uh, like, uh, very fundamental, techni fundamental uh, technique that uh, is used by almost every Linux process. Uh, but I, I have to admit that there are still bad news because our expulsion technique uh, used uh, many send MF message calls to prepare the kernel memory, but unfortunately, the renal sandbox is forbid you to do so. So it forces us to find some new ways to, uh, to exploit, and I admit this makes our life harder. And also, you know that uh, uh, if you are clever, you cannot make Sam clever or some your neighbor also clever because the windows, they always tend to make mistakes. They are always in a hurry and they put buggy code here and there. And uh, here is a bug in the Huawei uh, phones like uh, HW EXT service that is running the system server contest. And uh, there is, you can see there is a very obvious integer overflow here and you can like uh, get auto bounce access, both read and write and whatever like. And, but you use that uh, Google, of course, they are not aware of this kind of interfaces. Uh, but uh, the Windows Adam themselves and Windows do not modify their ethnic policy to adjust to this. So they are opening also new interfaces for attack. So let's go to the comparison part. So <clears throat> we analyzed the implementation of the sandbox on OS X and Android. And now we want to do some comparison and uh, wrap up. And uh, after this short comparison, we will do a quick demo of uh, our OS X uh, code execution and uh, remote uh, um, kernel code execution. And uh, after that, we will just do uh, some uh, very small conclusion and then we will conclude. So um, uh, both platforms share uh, a lot, actually. They both have a file-based uh, um, file uh, um, sandbox profile definition, uh, which you can audit. And, uh, but except from that, uh, we, we can feel that the Chromium uh, sandbox on Android is stronger than in other platforms because it offers very small uh, attack surface. And uh, also in Android, the sandbox is more layered like first, you have the <coughs> uh, Chrome AC Linux, uh, uh, sorry, the isolated APP uh, SE Linux policy, and uh, then uh, it's running uh, as a. Um, it, it, uh, if, even if you escape this uh, sandbox, uh, Chrome is an application, uh, so it's restricted by the DSC sandbox. So there are quite a, a lot of layers that you have to take into consideration. So let's go to the demo, and uh, after the demo, we'll go to the conclusion. And uh, uh, we are presenting like, uh, two demos for this year's front home, and the uh, one we exploit the one in the uh, OSX. Uh, so, yeah, so the two demos are both uh, two remote comp compromission oh, of OSX. I can't find my point. One is a. Uh, users uh, Safari code execution bug and then um, a sandbox escape in user space. 
And the second one uh, is a Safari uh, renderer bug and then a sandbox escape to kernel. And uh, in this demo, you will see that uh, the victim inside the virtual machine is, uh, will browse to a website and uh, then the attacker on the left will get a remote root shell. Uh, this uh, 10.11.3 is what we exploited. It is the newest version at the time of the point on. So first, there are the Safari render, uh, render uh, like a bug in the JavaScript or the GLC engine. So you can see on the left side, the attacker gets a remote root shell. Because, it's because we are exporting the Windows server, which is, which is responsible for the uh, graphics stuff on graphics, uh, user space graphics, graph, graphics stuff in OS X. You can see the graphics uh, has a freezes in the victim machine. So we choose to get an out of out uh, connected root shell. So this is our belief. this is our uh, user mode root, root exploit, and uh, as I have said before, uh, you have got a user mode root, you, but you cannot make, make them make, make a sandwich for you. You still need a kernel exploit. So uh, also credit to QB for making this video. Uh, there's some fancy music, credit to Hans Zimmer. Interesting observation is that uh, you cannot what add a user it? mode root to, to spawn a calculator. You, you say that a sudo calculator, it will tell you, uh, it will not tell you, no, I will spawn a calculator for you. It will say illegal instruction. But as a kernel mode, you can actually spawn a user mode, uh, uh, spawn a user mode root calculator. So if you see like a, a root uh, UID calculator on your computer, oh, you, you, are, you, are, you are boomed. <laughs> So last uh, slide. Uh, so to draw a conclusion, uh, we believe that sandboxes are great uh, security medications. Uh, on the, I believe that all recent uh, advanced operating system has sandboxes support, and uh, they take some different approaches, but they have the same concept, and uh, they make attackers to require some uh, additional spark to exploit sandboxes. Uh, so, but as a determined hacker can still compromise the system, uh, yeah, as we can see in the previous demos. So, some credit uh, goes to our colleague, like Liang Chen, QB, and Wuxi, and other members of KingLab. So, if you have questions, you can contact us your Twitter, KingLab, and also my Twitter and uh, Marco's Twitter. Or, so, you, yeah. or you can find us around yeah. if you have any questions. So, thank you for the time. Thank you.